Hey guys, it's Wednesday, it's puck time, it's hockey, baby. I love ice hockey. Uh, Andrew McGinnis with us, Buster Sports. We're going to take apart four games in detail. Then we'll get to the last minute of play where we'll take a look at all the other games. Also, I've got a big promotion up for you guys and we've got a story coming from Andrew McGinnis. Let's bring these guys in. Andrew, will leave you to last. Buster is in Mexico. Uh, Buster, here's my. You're you're a single guy. No, I have a Mrs. Buster. Oh, you have a Mrs. Buster. That explains I why you are in Mexico in the winter. I was thinking to myself, you know, yes. old mustache, you know, not not necessarily in your prime, if you will, uh, single man. I, I'd be in uh, oh, Panama oh, or me, Costa I'm Rica. In I'm in better shape now. Yeah. I'm in better shape now than I was at Yeah, time. but I understand I now why you're now. not in Costa Rica in the wintertime and instead you're in Mexico. Um, how you been, brother? I actually might have been. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very good, Prez. Thanks for asking. Sorry about last week. We um, uh, in, in October here, because uh, we're right on the Gulf, they get massive. Like if, if you really like watching lightning storms, oh, they're beautiful. But hit a transformer last week. We were out without power for uh, about a day and a half. And I've been coming here for seven years now, and that it's only been the second time that I've actually lost power or even internet for any length of time. So, I mean, it's not like it happens all the time. Here. Okay, well, I'm glad we have you with us today. Uh, Andrew McGinnis, you won your play last night, 18 and three run, is that correct? Yes, it, it's, been, it's been incredible. Um, you know, yesterday, Prez, I told you on the show, I was a little bit frustrated because Overnight, uh, I gave out an under 216, uh, and it had to get taken down. So my job was to put my other play up uh, as a $2 Tuesday. So I ended up cashing two picks as a Tooney Tuesday. However, you know, it, it just goes to show how important it is to get that early number. And, you know, that, that number ended up landing Prez on 215. Uh, it was pretty much a sure loser. Uh, I had a client literally message me and say, you better keep kissing that horseshoe you have at your house because <laughs> something's going right. Um, you know, there was about a minute to go. It was, I believe, at 2.13. Uh, you know, free throws last second in the game. They ended up missing them. Uh, I ended up winning my Lakers under as well. It, it's, a, it's an under fiesta right now. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now in the NBA early season. The, the betting markets are putting these totals far too high. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're cashing in nine straight NBA winners for me, Press. Way to go, dude. And uh, you're going to get 90 days of uh, Andrew's plays for a very low 499. I uh, use the promo code AM499. That's AM499. And Andrew... I know you don't know this, but you set the all-time record at Sports Memo for sales made in a day yesterday. So congratulations. Oh, very good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Nice. Hockey time. Columbus. They're hosting Edmonton. Minus 150. Ah, Edmonton on a back-to-back -back right now. And, you know... I don't know the statistics, but Mike Babcock, uh, really over the hill, a coach who's seen the game pass him by uh, and is really keeping down the Toronto Maple Leafs um, journey to the cup. Uh, he, he said last week, because they were last week, they played a team back to back. It might have been Minnesota. Uh, I think Minnesota played Montreal and then they came in and played Toronto. But anyway, Mike Babcock said teams on a back to back have a 28% chance of winning a game. Do either of you know whether that is true? It doesn't feel right. No, it doesn't feel right to me. No, <clears throat> but it could be true. If he says it, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, it could be true. I think I they uh, have a less chance of winning when they play their backup every time. Yeah. You know, for the first half of the back-to-back. -back. Okay, Andrew, nobody asked you that question. Anyway, Edmonton's on a back-to-back -back tonight. They're going into Columbus. The over and under is six in this game. And, boys, I like the under in this game. I like the under in most uh, Columbus games. But I think Edmonton, is their scoring is slow down. They weren't able to put up a one spot yesterday. Um, although I'm very bullish on Edmonton still, and I do think they're live tonight, I prefer betting the under. Buster? Uh, you're right. With them being on a back-to-back, -back, and they have been just playing terrible on the road, Prez. They, uh, 
they, they didn't show up for the first two periods. And then they had a great third period. They're down 2-1. Couldn't, couldn't get the job done, of course. But uh, now they come here and uh, you get Mike Smith in net. And that's, that's always sometimes a problem. Although he has been playing well. I'll give him that. He has been playing well. Um, problem with Edmonton, like you said, they went out to a great start. McDavid, Dreisaitl, ripping it up. They're still scoring. But the problem with them... Their second line, Nugent Hopkins, nowhere. Gagne's not helping. Um, that Alex Chase on it, 22 goals last year. He's got none. They need to step yeah. up second and third line to help these guys, right? Because if they don't, you're going to see a deja vu thing happen. When, uh, when Tippett and Holland went there, they left pretty much alone to see. They wanted to see what they had. They came out of the gate strong. But uh, I had said in a couple of my uh, – I do my Buster's Top 10. And I had said in there how – you know, it could be the same thing over again where now people catch up with McDavid and Dreisaitl, but, you know, there's a lot more tape. Not not that that really matters because these guys are so good, but if you don't have other scoring, you're going to you're going to lose, and especially on the road. The last four games, they've had four goals, so you're under probably is a good way uh, to go, although I don't know when they're going to break out. If they're going to break out, they could break out tonight against a Columbus club that... Um, they just had a collapse on Saturday night against Philly. Torts must be just going crazy. They had a total collapse in the third period. But Columbus has been, been playing tough, 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 which I like. I like a team that plays tough. Before that game, there was four games in overtime they went to. So they have been playing well. Uh, for me here, because of the back-to-back, -back, because of what Edmonton did in that third period and still not getting the job done, I'm going to go with the Columbus Blue Jackets, minus a half on the money line, first period get about 150. That's because, like I say, I think uh, Edmonton won't come out of the gate too fast, but you can't trust Columbus either. So uh, that, that's that's where I'm looking in this game, guys. Andrew McGinnis, thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to revert back to something that uh, Carmine Bianco said in a few shows ago, and he was talking about you want to catch a team on the early part of their streak or middle part of it, you don't want to catch a team with a late half of a streak. And, you know, yesterday on the show that I did with Prez, I spoke about how I would have a lean to Detroit. Uh, I'll be quite honest, Prez. I didn't bet Detroit, uh, but I would have had a lean to them just simply based off Edmonton wasn't going to be able to consistently keep up with what they were doing. And, you know, Buster touched on it. It's going to be the headline for, you know, several years to come until they fix it. It's the secondary scoring. Um, we all know it. Anyone that follows hockey knows the secondary scoring is the biggest piece uh, that has to be there for the Edmonton Oilers. And Buster also spoke about how Columbus keeps things close. No matter who they're playing, they seem to keep a very yeah. close yeah. game. So although Columbus is, is tend to be a lower-scoring team and they can trend to the under, uh, I, I just I can't see Edmonton just flat-out falling on their face. And to me, back-to-backs mean fatigue. So I think their offense won't go away. Maybe their back-checking and defense will. Uh, also, Buster referenced a, a pissed-off, for lack of better words, Columbus team after their game Saturday. I'm going to take a stab here with the over involving a Columbus game and the Edmonton Oilers to bounce back here uh, after their flat, flat performance. If you only put up one goal against the Red Wings, uh, you better come off that uh, with a good performance. He's Andrew McGinnis. You can find him at Sports Memo. He's on an 18-3 and all-sports run. I am on an 18-7 and all-sports run, and tonight I have my first five-unit play in hockey of the entire season. You guys can get it for half price. Use the promo code PREZ20. Uh, Buster, Montreal, price in net, plus 105, going uh, into uh, Arizona. Uh, right. Arizona, 7-3 well, and three on the year, man. Uh, yeah, 7-3-1. and one. They're, they're, they're playing really well. And uh, th that's, a, that's a club that I think is going to get in. Like, they'll be fighting for that playoff spot for sure. Um, Go so ahead. You know, uh, <laughs> okay, sorry, Prince, for cutting you off there. Um, uh, for me tonight, Arizona was on that four-game uh, uh, road trip, and uh, now they've only had one day off uh, to, co to come back, so they get back, and uh, I think that they will be uh, coming out maybe a little sluggish. Montreal, which uh, I know Andrew probably had mentioned this to you uh, maybe yesterday or Monday, uh, they just got finished beating down a real, really 
Now, I don't know if you're being sarcastic, Prez, when you were talking about uh, Mike Babcock. Were you being sarcastic about what, uh, what you no. what you believe there? Or is no, that, I just I, 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 I need him to go away. I I totally agree with you. And again, in my my little report I do every week, I mentioned for about Babcock. Unfortunately, has to go. But if that's going to be tough, we're going to have to pay a lot of money. But they've got the money, so they they should get rid of him. Anyways, since Montreal played Saturday with that nice beatdown on the, the Leafs, they come here and they're on a three-game road trip. Now, to a man, they've got to believe the other two games, they got to go to Vegas and to Dallas, uh, a team that maybe figured it out in the third period last night and, you know, come back. So may, maybe they'll get on the road, get on the, on the on a roll again. So Montreal's got price and net. They need to win this game because if they don't win this game tonight, They've got uh, two tough ones, so they might go over three on a road trip. Haven't played since Saturday. Arizona, a little tired, a little flat. Montreal's just a small dog, which I don't like. I am going to use them first period, uh, Montreal. They're getting a plus 110 for the first period, so I will, I will go with them there because I think that they will uh, play. You know, they'll come out a little bit flying, like I said, because it's going to be their first road game and first game since Saturday. And... Uh, I don't want to play the whole game because Arizona, like you said, Prez, are 7-3 and, and 1 on the year, and they are playing really good hockey. It just might take them a period or so to get their feet going since, like I say, since they're coming back from the the, the road trip. So I'm with Montreal first period, um, plus 110, I believe it is. Andrew, we talk about this all the time. Um, these teams coming home for their first game after a long road trip and arizona had a long road road trip they were in, on the east coast they played the rangers the islanders new jersey and buffalo uh, they've been out on the road since the 22nd it's now the 30th it's eight days uh this is not a good spot for arizona regardless of how well they're playing i lean on montreal here i certainly agree and a lot of people might say it's good to be home. A team is happy to be back in their home, uh, their home arena. But it, everything takes time. Everything takes time to settle back in, get used to a routine. Whether or not you've been playing professionally for X amount of years, you just have to get back used to being home again and being in your home arena. Uh, well, what I want to hear, guys, is the fact that this team has a 7-3-1 and record, uh, but they have not really beaten yeah. that teams and we're still early enough in the season guys it's october we're recording this video the season started on october 9th okay there's may probably maybe three teams that arizona has beaten that's impressed me one of them being nashville you know one, one of them maybe being buffalo uh and give or take you know a, a vegas that was just a flat spot for them but they beat a winnipeg team that's been struggling they beat an ottawa team we know what they're like they beat a new york rangers team we know what they're like you know, you guys get what I'm trying to say here. This is a false, uh, false uh, favorite here, pretty much. You know, this is this team is not as good as, as they're being portrayed. And as much as you know, uh, yourself, Prez, Alex, and I, Carm have talked about this team improving. They're still not, you know, up here like they think they are. And, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and uh, take Montreal. However, if you look at you know the over as cash in five straight road games for Montreal, scoring has not really been difficult for them. Uh, this year in, in games against teams that are lower tier, you know, not like Tampa Bay, uh, Colorado, even the Leafs, teams like that, but against well, teams they that surely are lower tier. They got 11 against the Leafs in two games. Yeah, small but that's, scale. But that's but, the Leafs, though. So. Uh, shut up, And Buster. the total has gone over in 13 of 16 road games against Arizona. So I'm going to go with the over here and the Habs uh, until the Arizona Coyotes can beat some good teams. And I'll be frank, you know, if this is all bias aside. I don't know what the Habs are yet. I don't. Yeah, they're shit. Until they can beat some great teams themselves, you know? They're shit. So, but ultimately, yeah. you guys get what I'm trying to say. Shit. Fred, you get what I'm trying to say, though, right? So, shit. so what's the next step? What, what's up, what's below shit then, Chris? Smelly <laughs> shit. Well, that's what the Leafs are. Oh, oh, Buster, you're so funny. Say yourself I'm, not, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be yeah, yeah. Yeah. Buster a thousand dollars right now that Toronto ends I Toronto with higher, more points yeah. than Montreal no I'm not going to make that why point. you just call them I'm, shittier than shit Press. How, how about this how they about are this? right now a hundred to pay eight hundred a thousand to pay eight hundred a thousand to pay six 
A thousand to pay I'll seven fifty. <laughs> no. No, you, you Present, got the, how about this? You got Present, all the talent what? that hey, the I wasn't the one that defined Toronto as worse than Montreal. You just did. Yeah, but you said well, Montreal you said was were, shit, and they've yes, lost right. to Montreal twice. Yeah, so I'm take my bet. Just, just seven fifty. A thousand against seven fifty. No, now it's a thousand for six hundred. But screw you, dude. What about Fine, I'll do a thousand for seven hundred right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about season series? A thousand against seven hundred. Let's go, Buster. You can afford it. I know, but still, it's, it's a bad bet. I don't make bad. Oh, bets. it's not a bad bet. You just called them shittier than shit. <laughs> well, that's right because they are right now. Oh, it's enough with over. your nonsense! You won't even October, take like that bet. Said, for right Christ's now, sake. Guys. Guys, I want you to know that you're you're making the commenters very very happy right now. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. So okay, <laughs> listen. Like this. I got to tell you about uh, my hockey game last night. Before we get into the next game, which will be Tampa Bay, New Jersey, uh, we were down three two with two and a half minutes to go. Uh, I play uh, right defense. Um, the faceoff was in on the right side in our end, which meant I'm the only defenseman behind the play. We have the fastest skater in hockey on our team, uh, fastest skater in our league in hockey, fastest skater in the, the league on our team. team. I called it. I called a timeout. I'm the captain. I told. I put my best faceoff guy out. I said, "You win it cleanly to me. I want my speedster playing left wing, so he's on the outside." I told him, "You skate straight through the defenseman, and the puck will meet you." at center ice i will lob it and land it right at center ice for you to get a breakaway and score the game winner dude the ref was standing there listening to our play and my guy won the face off clean came to me i literally it was bam landed right at center ice Dude had a breakaway. Ref turns to me and said, holy crap, that was a good play. He missed. Did, did, I was oh. going to say, did he score? <laughs> what was the move? What was the move? Like, I got to hear what he tried to uh, do. Let's move on. Tampa Bay against New Jersey. New Jersey uh, plus 105. Tampa Bay's on a back-to-back. -back. They just played the Rangers. They lost 4-1. Uh, I think this Tampa Bay team is pacing themselves, Buster. Uh, but I think uh, I think they should win tonight. What do you like? Uh, well, well, Prez, I'm not sure about. They, they could win tonight. That's uh, I'll go through my little analysis here. They could win tonight. Uh, New Jersey hasn't played since Friday. Uh, that's that always is a uh, concern when a team's coming off a of back to back with a team who's desperate. I know it's October. Shouldn't be desperate on October, but they've only won two games, and they have a lot of talent there, so uh, could happen. Problem for Tampa, A, Hedman is out. B, um, I think it's uh, McElhaney's in net tonight? Yeah, McElhaney right? versus Schneider. Yeah, McElhaney's in net tonight. So that's, uh, he's 0-3. Mind you, he's lost two games in overtime. Uh New, New Jersey, just like I say, be, you, I can't play New Jersey. Okay. I can't lay, hold on, I can't lay 135 or 125 with Tampa, right? There's just, to me, this whole game is a complete pass. You don't need to bet this game. There's other games on the, on the card that are way better to bet. Yeah, everybody's going to bet Tampa because, you know, it's Tampa, right? But I'm, t I, I'm just warning everybody, Tampa hasn't been playing that well. And uh, doesn't it, and like with a couple more injuries they got, uh, yeah, I'm staying right away from this game. Right, guys, listen to Buster. He was the number one NHL expert at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com last year with 119% return on investment. Uh, Andrew, what do you like in this game? I'm going to go back to the well with the over uh, with Tampa Bay here. After a flat spot last night, we know what they're capable of doing, and when it comes down to it, the New Jersey Devils are still completely an over to me, a uh, team to me. They started the season off not, not not looking like that at all, though. Not looking like it at all. Uh, Prez, you and I spoke about it earlier on in the season. We don't like their goaltending. We like their offense, and their defensemen can move up and be mobile. But they only have 
on average, 2.44 goals per game on the season. So if you look at that stat right now, that wouldn't want you to take an over. Uh, but ultimately, they're going to up that. You know, over their past couple of games even, they have been improving that against New York, against Arizona. They've been kind of finally starting to see the puck go in, and we're seeing Jack Hughes start to score, and that's great for the team. Uh, and, and ultimately, Tampa Bay, on a larger scale, has gone over on the road uh, tremendously. I mean, they don't doesn't matter with them if they're home, away, 12 of their last 18 on the road. Uh, and just looking at the way they match up against this team, I just can't see any neutral zone time. It's going to be end-to-end yeah. action, trading chances, trading opportunities. And again here, guys, we're presented a six-and-a-half goal total that a lot of people are, for some reason, still worried about grabbing. But a 4-3 game is not you know uncommon in the NHL these days. So uh, New Jersey's rested here. Tampa Bay is going to be... Uh, pretty upset, and uh, I've said this to you before. I, I'm I'm a fan of bounce back spots for certain teams, and Tampa Bay is certainly a team off a loss. I'm looking at grabbing either an over or money line side with them, but today it's going to be an over. Uh, Andrew McGinnis on an 18 and three all sports run. Use the promo code AM499 at Sports Memo. Uh, and you can get 90 days of all his plays, every sport he does. Uh, plus, remember, guys, I have a five-unit play tonight in hockey. It's the first one of the year for me. Uh, my promo code is PREZ20, um, and you get it for half price. Colorado, Buster, uh, hosting Florida. Uh, two of their three first liners are out. Uh, Nazem Kadri has been moved up to the first line. You know, the thing with the thing about this, and you see it with John T in Toronto and now with Colorado losing two, um, this doesn't only affect their first line. This really affects their second, third, and fourth line the most. Uh, I think this team is going to struggle to find goals. Uh, they're playing Florida, and I think they're a good defensive team. Um I like under six and a half in this game, and I'd like to see what Colorado does without uh, Lannis Gog and whatever that other guy's name is, Kucha, Schmucha, or whatever. Ratnan? That guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, well, Prez, th this game here for me, like I say, is a real tough week for, uh, for Colorado, uh, losing those two guys. And like you say, now everybody, it affects everybody. Uh, I always like to go with that uh theory of you know the first couple of games yeah. when guys are injured or everybody kind of steps up and uh, and plays Colorado they uh I, I think they still have some guys that are going to put that puck in the net I, I know you said Florida uh, defensively uh, has been playing no well, Colorado but, okay. Florida yes, defensively Florida. is not they're, playing they're, well yeah they're a shit show yeah really they uh they walked into Vancouver on Monday night there and they didn't even show up yeah, blown out. It, it, it was terrible yeah blown out but the thing with Florida, they if, if you uh, watch them play, they're they're constant speed, constant offense, and it's kind of like you know what, we we we, we paid Bobrovsky all this money. You better save some pucks for us, right? You better you better stand on your head for us because we're just going to go all out every every game. And unfortunately for them, bobrovsky has got like an eight seventy save percentage. It's not happening. You can't you know you can't save all this stuff. So uh, for me, you, you know what. Uh, Colorado might be a play, but they're like laying one fifty-five without the two guys. That just that just seems to be too high. And as as far as Florida, now this is their fourth game. Now they go to the altitude in Colorado. They're on a long road trip. They just want to go home. They're going to go out and play street hockey tonight. They're going to just fly up and down the ice and hope for the best. Hope that Colorado maybe can't score goals against them. And uh, they're, they're, once after tonight's game, they, they get a bunch of days off and they get to sit at home for Detroit. So uh, I don't really like this game much, but I will have a small play on the over six and a half here because I just think that um, there'll be goals scored here. Last time these guys played was 5-4. I know Rantanen and Landis Cock was playing. But um, five, each each time these guys play, I think there was 85 shots last game. The two two times the, this last year, they had like 73 and 75. These guys just go all out when they play. Six and a half. Andrew's mentioned a bunch of times. Six and a half is not a big hawk, a number in NHL. So, uh I'll take a, but I'm just taking a small lean only because of what you had said, Prez, not because of what you said, because that's how I handicapped myself, is that Colorado might 
revert to trying to play some defense. Andrew McGinnis, what are your thoughts? A lot of good points there, uh, both of you guys. And if, I'm going against the grain, guys. I, I, I don't like to do it too often. I like to ride the hot hand. I like to ride some trends. I'm going against the grain. Um, first of all, I want to mention, though, with the injuries and the guys being out, it, it puts that much more emphasis on how important it is that they have Burakovsky and Kadri now. It, it really does. I mean, where would this team be right now if they didn't have Kadri and Burakovsky uh, to fill in those spots offensively? If you look at Colorado's last, let's say, four games right now, uh, they've all been in blowout fashion, whether it's a victory or a loss. They haven't really played a tight game in a while. And I'm expecting this to be a tight game. Uh, and I'm looking at an under in this spot. Florida has gotten carried away, you know, bet going over the total. They've been involved in a 6-5 game against Calgary, 6-2 against Edmonton, and a 7-2 beatdown where they lost against Vancouver. When you lose and you put up, you get seven goals scored on you, you know, do you want to A, go into your next game and try and score six, or do you want to B, put a good defensive performance up? Because I think that it's option two. You want to go in there and say, hey, that's not acceptable. And coaches are very, very short-minded. They're looking at the last game and saying, we have to fix that now. You know, our next game, I don't care who it's against, we have to fix what just happened. Um, Colorado, a little bit short-manned. I still think Grubauer is a great cold tender. And like Buster said, I've been saying this for the past uh, few days, Florida ultimately wanted to go out there, get a good goaltender. They wanted to go out there and, and up their, their defensemen. I mean, I talked to a few people that uh, know some guys in the Florida organization, and they said, you know, they're they were pumped about getting a good goalie, but they didn't think that was their problem. They thought it was defense. They didn't really think it was their goaltending. So hopefully in this one here, they can say, hey, look, we, we allowed seven goals against Vancouver, who, according to Prez, don't have any you know, superstars. They should be able to bounce back here and uh, go under the total. He's Andrew McGinnis from Sports Memo, Buster Sports from Wager Talk. It's time for the last minute of play. St. Louis minus 185 against Minnesota. And Minnesota's playing better right now. The over and under is five and a half. I am passing. Buster, 10 seconds. 10 seconds back to back for Minnesota. Tarasenko, the injury thing again. I think St. Louis comes off line. I like them uh, on the puck line, minus a half in the first period, plus 150. Minnesota's got some tired legs after getting destroyed in the third period last night. Andrew McGinnis. Recently, Minnesota's been putting up goals and have been involved in some higher scoring games. We saw what happened against Dallas. Uh, that one was a five yesterday for some reason as a total. I went over in that one. And uh, St. Louis has been trending over as well. Um, I'm going to go over the total on this one over five and a half. Uh, Andrew, 18 players are going to skate out on the ice for the Vancouver Canucks. 11 of them are superstars. Um, <laughs> they're playing against uh, L.A. Um, pass. It's a play for me simply off the price we're getting, Prez. Minus 112 I'm seeing here at five dimes. Uh, I just have to grab it. You know, a better team in better form. A 7-3-1 team against a 4-8 and eight team. Uh, minus 110 here. Um, it's a no-brainer for me. And a fast team against a slow team. And a young team against an old team. And a team with yeah. 11 superstars against a team with... The list goes on. The list goes with on. The you well, they, they do... Uh, LA do have three superstars, just only one of them is still a superstar. Uh, I just have a bad feeling about this game. Uh, I think it's a bad spot for Vancouver. Buster? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I take it there's been a lot of mocking going on. I don't watch a show all the time, so yeah. yeah I Andrew, Andrew, uh, uh, Andrew decided. Really likes Vancouver or something. Andrew decided to tell <laughs> me that Vancouver has a lot of superstars on their team. But he is in his early 20s, so he has yet to understand what the word superstar actually means. And it's been so great, Buster, because whether or not they're superstars or not, they're off to a 7-3-1 and one start. Hey, so I cheer for Vancouver. It's, it's going it's yeah. to be great if they have an outstanding I cheer season. for every single Canadian team, except one. Except, yeah. Me too, Press. Well, why Me would too. I cheer for a team that is in a city that wants to separate from Canada? Why? Why would I cheer for a team that's in a keep, city keep that wants to force it. French down my damn throat? Why? Why would I want I their fans happy? Why? I don't want their fans happy. 
Do you know how many times I've gotten into a taxi in Montreal and said, take me to the Ritz or take me to the Four Seasons? And the cab driver says, we only drive people who speak French. Please get out. Do you know how many times? That's happened to me five to ten times in my life. Screw well, those people that, in Montreal. That, Screw those people in Quebec. I don't Learn want them happy. Well, Learn your nation's language. Yeah, my nation's language. language is English. English! <laughs> and shame <laughs> on I, you, I, I, Buster. Yeah, you, Andrew, you come from Halifax. You had some lowly ass little buck city in the middle of freaking nowhere. You can cheer for any damn team you want. You, Buster, you're from Ontario. And people in Ontario, not only do we have to deal with those separatist crappers, not only do we have to be shoved French down our damn throat, on top of all of that, Ontario actually takes our taxpayers' money and sends it to people who live in Montreal. Screw that team and screw those fans. Ontario at its finest right now. Maritimers are the nicest people in Canada for a reason. We would never say anything like yeah, that. Yeah, because we your taxpayer money keep doesn't go to prop up people who live in Quebec. True. I, I pray it's honest here. I actually do have to say, though, there's a story behind the Vancouver Canucks, actually, are Canada's most hated team. Uh, based off just the way they celebrate, the way that they handle yeah. their business. No, they're not. And a few years back. No, they're not. A few years back. I don't, just let, let, let me finish. A few years back, when the Kings played the Canucks and knocked them out of the playoffs, they actually tweeted out and were saying, "Hey, Canada, you're welcome." Yeah. You're well. You know, they 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 know that Canada doesn't like the Canucks. Buster, so. what do you like in this Kings game? I, I won't even comment on all those. Um, yeah, because you know I'm right. <laughs> Anyways, I won't comment on that remark either. Uh, Vancouver, L.A., like this game a lot. Like it over six. Both teams uh, like to uh, play offensively. L.A. has had a little trouble scoring, but they are the number one team in shots on goal, shots attempt. They will come out at home, and it'll, it'll be, it should be over by the third period, early third period, over six. It should be six and a half all day long. Well, my second favorite team is playing tonight. Who would that be? Any team playing the Montreal Canadiens. Prez out! Ha, ha, ha. Later, boys. Okay, right, guys, take care.